did you guys have a, a some sort of guideline as to which bands you were gonna pick, or did you kind of say, you know what, this sounds good, we're gonna go with it? Did you get that, Mike? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting it. He's still there, Sabrina Ryden. I can hear them. Yeah, uh, yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. And we're back. <laughs> we're back. Okay. <laughs> All right. So third time to charm, right? So um, my, my question to you is uh, what I was saying is since you guys had an outpour of uh, bands who wanted to be in the festival, uh, did you guys have a, a certain guideline that you went by as to who you're going to pick? and Or did you just kind of say, I know what, this sounds really good, so we're going to go with this? Um, sorry, dogs, friends, because you repeated, because you broke up horribly. Okay. About the question. All right, let me try this again. What I was saying is, you guys have had a, a, a good outpour of bands applying to be in the festival. So my question was saying, did you have a guideline as? No, to... not not working. Our guideline for bands that uh, apply to the festival. Uh, um, no, not really. Um, was the short answer. Um, we op we opened it up to everyone, um, and as bands sent their stuff in, we would obviously have a quick look on Facebook to see how long they've been going, what their sort of following was like, and we, for the purposes of showcases, listened to each of the band and tried to sort of pick lineups work well together. Um, and then when it came to narrowing down from the showcases to the actual festival lineup, um, it was really, really hard. <laughs> and in the end, we, we just went with bands that worked well, I think. Well, can you hear me now, fine? Yeah, or... And a variety of uh, different sounds. Uh, uh, uh... Oh, wait, we can sort of hear you. Okay, you know what? Why don't I, I'm going to try calling you, literally calling you right back, okay? To see if that helps the connection a little bit. So, just give us one moment here. If can... Okay. Yeah, we'll I'm gonna... disconnect. Right, and I'll call you right back. Okay. All right, sorry about that. Are you still there, Mike? I probably lost Mike, too, so this is fun. All right. Get Mike back in a second here. All right. For some reason, Mike, when I hung up on you, well, when I hung up on Sabrina, sorry, it hung up on you as well. So oh, sorry, I wasn't too offended. It's all right. Yeah, okay. So we're gonna try Sabrina here again. See if you can do that clear connection. Hopefully, it will be this time. And sometimes, I mean, it's showing fine on my side, but I'm not sure about their internet connection. So I'm literally calling them right now. So I'm hoping, Mike. Sorry, do you want to send her a quick message? Then we're scrapping her just to make sure. Uh... Oh, wait. Right, you're oh, back. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Any better? It's still breaking up a little bit, but I think I can hear most of you now. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure what to tell you. I mean, I'm showing full power on this side, so I'm not. It just Skype for the most part works fairly well, but sometimes it can be a little finicky and. Unfortunately, not much I can do about it. Let's, uh, <laughs> roll with it we roll. We're good. Let's roll with it and do our best. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, I can yeah, hear you. Alright, well, it's all you, Mike. Go ahead. Maybe I'll try repeating what you say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no, man. This is all on you now. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, it's all on me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm to be no, no. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> fine. Where do we get to? Uh, bands and lineups and things. So yeah. So you, so you had 40, 40 odd bands apply uh, for eleven slots, and then you had the, the acoustic stage as well. Um, and just to recap, because I think it was a bit in and out in terms of signal. But you were basically saying there wasn't really a criteria. It was what's going to work. We don't know what we're going to find. Let's just see all the bands and, and see what happens. Is that a kind of fair, fair summary of how you got to where you are? <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Awesome, good stuff. And so the next question then for me is, how did you then choose the order? Because 
I would find that impossible. Oh. <laughs> it was. <laughs> That's a tricky one. You want, to, you want to keep people engaged during the day, um, you know, um, with a different variety to go into the acoustic. Um, do a bit of rock and roll on the main stage. Um, so yeah, just trying to like you know keep people's interest and um, sort of working up to you know sort of the evening um, with some blues and then uh, some rock and roll and, and rock. I think for, for me, um, the, the challenge was obviously the earlier slots in the day aren't, aren't huge. I mean, we don't have sort of hour, hour and a half headline slots anyway, because we, music that people aren't familiar with, people's interest tends to tail off about half an hour, 45 minutes in anyway. Um, so we, we tend to go roll with shorter slots to keep people on the ball if you like, um, but the downside to that is the, the sort of first half of the day, the, the, sets, the sets are shorter, um, and it's difficult because the bands that are playing in the first half of the day are equally as deserving of the longer slots as those that are playing later on. Um, it, was, <laughs> it was hard. <laughs> There's no rhyme or reason to it. It was hard. Um, and as Aidan said, it was just trying to keep a balance across the state, both stages um, of original stuff, covers, um, because a few of the bands are playing two chucks and covers in, um, and the, the different sounds, for example, um, uh, what was a really good example? Beck Krill um, are very music-esque um, and lend themselves quite well to later on slots in the day. Ideally, when it was dark, so probably even later than we've got to play with when they can shoot lasers out of their pretty light boxes and jump off stage and stuff. Um, they played at our bow showcase and they were phenomenal. Um, comparing that to, um, say, acoustics, which are very much old school uh, rock and roll covers, uh, which is guaranteed to get the older generation um, up and dancing. Um, they played last year. I personally absolutely love them. Um, they were the most requested band to come back, hence they have come back this year. So it was balancing whereabout we put them in terms of the people that are most likely to be around at that point of time as well. Awesome. There's a lot that goes into that. I mean, they, I can't even remember where we were playing, but we were just like, <laughs> we'll open it or whatever. We don't care. Like, it's, 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 it's a great thing to play. And, you know, that's the way, but it's kind of always the same. Like, we, you know, we open for bands in various places. We headline other gigs and stuff like that. And I think most bands are probably the same. It's kind of, you know, once you've been around a bit and played a bit, you just enjoy playing. But also, something I always say on this show and, and to anyone that will listen or buy me a drink is, you know, the best thing about being in a band is you get to see all the other bands. So, um, actually, I don't think it matters too much, you know, where yeah. you play or, or stuff like that um, so much now. But I was just curious, because I know, for example, Ivan at Rift Taffy's doing the Sounds for Hounds thing. Was really agonising over trying to like group the punk bands together and group the rock bands together. And stuff yeah, like that. You know, that was one way of I doing it. I feel the pain. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. I'm, I'm doing like an all uh, an all day thing in November, and I was trying to do a similar thing. Where it's like, oh, these kind of lead together, but then you know, I don't know if these haven't been around long enough. They can, can they go that late in the day? Oh, it's it's such a painful experience. It's hard enough with you know three or four bands sometimes, but with like eleven bands yeah. and actually two yeah. stages. So. You know, <laughs> I feel your pain. <laughs> it is tricky. Yeah, I mean, we've got like the Bronsons, uh, brilliant uh, 70s uh, hard driven rock there um, from early English punk bands. But uh, straight after that, we, we jumped to Victor, which is where I mentioned, and we wanted to like keep it varied and then bring sort of uh, hard rock blues after that with Big River. So, mm -hmm. so you don't get one style sort of the same after, you know, one band after another. Keep people on yeah. their toes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Bainsy? Yeah, did you, uh, now when you are putting the festival together initially, did you ever have any like big concerns that might have held you back a little bit or just kind of just go for the entire way without stopping? Uh, would people turn up? Obviously, as I said, we, we run completely for charity. Um, last year was for cancer research. 
this year is split between St Catherine's Hospice, which is a, um, a local hospice end of life care. Um, I've been to meet the girl, um, the staff there, and they've sh- they've showed me around and showed me some of the work they do. It is phenomenal. They get very little funding from the NHS. Their shortfall is massive um, that they have to fundraise just to continue. And they're what they are the only um, adult end of life care um, provider in the, in this part of the country, um, in this county rather, and. There is such a wide net of people that need their services um, and they need to grow, to expand, to be able to cater and help everyone that needs them. Um, so I'm really, really proud to be doing our bit and supporting them. Um, our other charity this year is British Heart Foundation, um, both of which came about partly because my, my father passed away just after the festival last year um, and he, he'd been supported by British Heart Foundation as he had a heart condition previously um, and also a number of the bands that are playing and played last year had personal involvement uh, with BHF. Basically we chose the charities by putting it out there to people that came last year and the local sort of community groups and saying well this is this is the this is a potential list of charities. What do you want to support? Um, and then we we rolled from there. And both of them are really really deserving charities to share. That that's awesome to hear. I mean, you know, it just makes you want the festival to do that much better. So <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna get to our next uh, band that's gonna be the festival. This is the Bronsons. This one's called Just for Fun. Dig this. <laughs> Right on. That was the Bronsons and Just for Fun. And you know what? Uh, right off the hop, uh, it reminded me big time of Day Tripper. And uh, it kind of, and then kind of flowed in that cool, like kind of ending blues riff. Like it was, a, it was a really cool song. They, uh, they're a really, really cool band. We they played for us uh, back at Christmas time down in Hove, um, and. Stefan, their, their lead singer, is amazing. He loves jumping off the stage and getting right up into the crowd and making people get involved. If you uh, if you didn't feel um, intimate and involved before, you will do after you've seen the Bronsons. Oh, right on. Um, Mike, go ahead. 
Yeah, we've um, we've played them on the show a couple of times, and uh, 